Today we're going to be doing some server maintenance. I'm going to be taking the Proxmox server that I currently have in a desktop case, and I will be transplanting it into a much smaller 2U rack mount server chassis instead. And I'm doing that in order to save some space in my closet where I have all of my server and network gear, and hopefully it'll help tidy things up a little bit and give me a little bit more space to do some other things in there. So um, it'll be challenging because we're going from a nice spacious case into a much more compact one, but I've planned it out and it should work just fine. So let's go ahead and get into the build. So this is the Rosewell RSV Z2600 2U server case. You can see here that it's a relatively compact unit. There are some air vents here for the power supply, so uh, it would be a good idea to put it somewhere in your server rack where this has access to the air if you want to maximize the airflow from the case. Let's go ahead and remove the lid. It's secured by two screws on each side. Inside, you'll see that there are uh, vent holes on either side, so uh, that's where you're going to have the airflow coming from these three 80 millimeter fans in the front that come pre installed. There are three drive cages. These hold one three and a half inch drive each, and this one is able to hold two. You see standard uh, Molex cables for the fans uh, and then uh, cabling for the front of the case controls. There are low profile um, units here for PCI cards. Uh, your motherboard will go here. The power supply will go here. As you can see, the expansion card brackets are actual solid pieces. They're not breakaways, so that's a nice touch. The edges are all uh, well machined. The only sharp edge I really could find was this back edge is a little bit on the sharp side, but um, the other areas are nicely rounded over and I don't feel like this is cheap construction. It comes with the standoffs pre-installed. So let's go ahead with our build. Let's go ahead and get started with putting the motherboard in. Now, since this is a transplant from another system, I've already installed the I.O. shield here in the back. No need for you to see me fiddling with that and trying to avoid cutting myself, but we'll take the motherboard here and go ahead and put it into place. Try to line up all of the ports here on the back. Always easier said than done. go. All right. We've got that in there now. Let's go ahead and get started down here in the corner. We'll just start attaching some of these screws. And one of the things you will notice with this particular case is that for the uh, micro ATX board that I'm using, it's not uh, lining up with this last corner hole. So this particular format means it's going to be a little bit squishy here in the corner. It's not a huge deal, just something to be aware of. So before we can install the 10 gigabit network card in the new 2U server, we're going to need to convert it. It had been a high profile card because the old server was an old desktop case. And so we need to replace the high profile bracket with the low profile bracket. And this is a simple matter of just removing a couple of screws here. those out and so now the card should pop free here just got a just got the little clip here to hold it in place let's see if we can hold that down and thread it over there we go 
so now we'll go ahead and put the new one in place here and hopefully the holes will line up neatly and they do so we'll go ahead and just screw it in just like that so now we'll just go ahead and install the 10 gigabit network card here just pop it right down in there and we'll take the screw that we had removed earlier from the cover and we'll go ahead and put that right in there and get it snugged up okay so now we've got the motherboard installed and the uh, network card installed and so from here we'll go ahead and install the power supply and then the hard drives all right let's go ahead and get the power supply inserted into the unit now and this is going to be a little bit tricky because this is again it's a transplant I'm reusing parts and this is a uh, non-modular power supply so I've got a whole rat's nest of cables here that we'll have to to manage but for the time being let's go ahead and get this installed so we can see if we have any fitment issues that we need to deal with so go ahead and just put a few screws in here to hold the power supply in place and notice I've put the fan opening up top here because there are the vent slots in the case um, as you remember from when we took a look at that at the beginning all right let's go ahead and start working on the rat's nest of power cables here we'll start by plugging in the 24 pin connector that should fit in pretty nicely and it's nice and secure in there so we'll worry about cable managing this just a little bit later all right now let's see if we can find there we go there's our CPU power so we'll go ahead and let's see make this look a little bit better at least while we're getting started here obviously it's by no means perfect but it'll do the trick nobody's ever gonna see this this is obviously just a server build stuck in a rack hopefully never to be seen or at least rarely seen right in there it's only it's an old motherboard so it only requires four pins of power uh, let's see so a 500 watt power supply is going to be plenty for that and we'll come back and we will do the molex for the fans and the hard drive uh, installation next after a lot of arm wrestling and messing around with things I've I've gotten everything jammed into this case that needs to be here there's a hodgepodge of three uh, four terabyte drives that I've accumulated from different projects. Uh, there is an SSD in here uh, to run the Proxmox uh, software itself. Uh, and then the cables, I did my best to sort of kind of cable manage it, but really it was more a question of figuring out how much cable length I had and trying to jam it in so that I could get the the cover down and fit everything where it needed to be it's obviously it's a very crowded case for um, this much stuff we'll have to see how the thermal performance is once we get it fired up and sealed up and all that but um, everything does seem to fit um, I did have a devil of a time particularly with the the screws that held the hard drive cage on down here on this side uh, trying to get them back in um, and that's partially because this is not a magnetic screwdriver and my magnetic screwdriver that I do have didn't do a good job of being able to fit down because the handle is thick and it's not as long a reach as this one. So um, word to the wise, if you've got a uh, longer screwdriver that's magnetic, you'll have an easier time. But it was still challenging getting all these cages um, and the screws squared away. And obviously it was challenging kind of fitting everything in here. But at the end of the day, it all got done. So now let's see if it works so this is as they say the moment of truth let's go ahead and hit the power button and see 
if now that we've got it all connected to power, if uh, it'll go ahead and start. And we've got power supplies up, the fans up. These fans seem to be running. I can feel the hard drive spinning up. I'd say we probably have success here, but let's let's give the good old screen here a minute to process and make sure we don't have any errors. There we go. Proxmox is loaded up. So it appears that we are uh, we are good to go. So there you have it, a successful transplant into a 2U server chassis for my Proxmox server. After a little bit of rearranging in the rack, we now have the new 2U server right down here at the bottom. Everything else is kind of moved up and compacted a little bit and left 4U of space down there so that when it's time to convert the NAS over from a desktop case into a rack mounted case, I'll be all set to put it in there. And of course, I still have a bunch of work to do on cable management, but we'll do that another day. So that will wrap up this transplant from a desktop case to a 2U server chassis. After letting it run for a few hours and checking on the thermals, it seems to be running just fine in there. It's idling around 32, 33 degrees, so it's going to be in great shape in there. I'm not at all concerned about it uh, overheating, and so I'm very happy with how it turned out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click subscribe and click on the reminder icon so that you get updates anytime I release a new video, and uh, overall very pleased for my first ever rack-mounted server chassis build.